It's Jim and Amy. Wow, it's Jim. Jim and Amy here with a real-time update. Our first one ever. Yes. So the last few weeks, we've had quite a bit of trouble. Tires and leaf springs and car wrecks. The um, last few weeks you've seen. The last few weeks here, Jim just got a brand new hip. I did. We're happy awesome. about that. Everything else is peachy. That's exactly right. So we, um, we thought we would jump in. Alaska Playlist is wrapping up. And uh, just kind of go over some questions that we've gotten along the way. Yes, but first, we want to clear up some comments. And uh, yes. Yes, because I think we've scared some of you. Sounds like it. And in a billion years, that is not what we want to do. No, not at all. You go to Alaska. You're going to be okay. We had some fluky things happen, which we'll address a little later on in this video. And we have a really big, exciting announcement for 2023. We do. Most importantly, let's not forget, if you've been watching the Alaska videos of our amazing adventure, let's focus on the amazing adventure. Because once we got to Alaska, everything just went smoothly. It was incredible. It was perfect. Don't forget that with all the hassles we had, we were out there jet skiing through glaciers and waterfalls with our daughter. That yes. was amazing. Walking around with grizzly bears. I mean, uh, most stunning location. I'd have been happy to walk around on that beach with no bears. It was beautiful. Uh, Seward, 4th of July in Seward. And oh, seeing that, that was incredible. so much fun. That was such a unique experience. Yes, yeah, so many great experiences, great fishing, came home with all this fish. That is what we think of when we think of the Alaskan adventure. Don't let us scare you. You are going to be okay. You just got to find a way to make it your own adventure. Yeah, exactly. So whether it's something that we did or th there is so much to do there. Yeah. So um, I, I would start booking now. It's March, 2023. You better hurry up. Yeah. We booked the jet skis to give you an idea. We went to the very end of June and we booked it in January. So they have a very limited season up there. You got to get on it. And you know what, if this, if this scares you and, and you're like, no, I don't think I want to take my RV or I don't want to drive the Alcan. That was part of the adventure for us. That was a good time. In spite of the struggles, right? Absolutely. But there are a lot of other ways for you to go. Sure. There's, you could fly into Anchorage mm -hmm. and spend a week or even a long weekend, I think. Um, sure. Um, of course, the cruises go in and out of Alaska. Um, Trains. We had some friends that flew up and did all of Alaska by train. They did. That was pretty cool. They were based out of Anchorage yeah. and they just took trains to Denali and Seward. And, all over the place. Yeah, all over the place. A lot of ways to do this. There, sure. Um, if you are going to go by RV, well, um, and you don't want to tackle a little alone, um, look, look for caravans. There's, Absolutely. there's companies that, um, caravan, they do everything for you. They, it's like a large group. I mean, I'm sure they come in different sizes and varieties to so do your research, but some of the caravans we encountered probably had 25 to 35, sure. I would guess RVs, every shape and size. Big fancy motorhomes, pop-up trailers, teardrops, however you drive and you like to travel, you're going to be fine. Go with it. All sizes work fine. Yeah, and it, it's, it, it was amazing to see. We, we used to watch them come in, and you have like, um, um, it's like a cruise, cruise director. director. Yes. You do. Yes. Jinx. Yeah, that's right. And they would come in, and they would set up everybody and check everybody in, and then direct them on their site and help them back in. Um, they, they, yeah, they helped them park even. Like, that's what we, that's, that's my job. Right. But they had a professional. And in one of the stops, the person, someone needed a windshield repair. That's someone right. needed a... Um, tire repair on one of their nice big motorhomes, and they already knew what town we're hitting to get it worked on and who we're calling yeah. when we get there. So that's a great resource to give you that additional level of comfort if that interests you. We didn't do it because no. we we tend to travel at a faster pace than most. Yep. We are a three night to five night kind of couple. Yep. So we like to get rickety ticket and moving along, and we like to go when we want to go. So it didn't work for us, but we came up with an alternative. We did, and that is a 
virtual caravan. Yeah. So get social. Yeah. Highly recommend Instagram for this specifically. If you're thinking about going on Alaska and you don't have an Instagram, get one. Um, start following hashtags. Summer in Alaska, Alaska 2023, RV to Alaska. Follow Whittier, Seward, towns you know you want to hit, and you'll start meeting other groups that are going with you. This was invaluable to us. So our virtual caravan, we were just sending information up and down the pipeline to each other. We had groups ahead of us that were warning us, hey, once you turn right at Haynes Junction, double the time you think it's going to take. And they, they were right about that. It was exactly double the time. Um, we we're passing information downstream to people about the mosquitoes. Hey, before you get up here, get some of these supplies. The Alcan, as you've seen, part of it collapsed. In Canada, the Alcan, Alaska Highway, was shut down over the weekend because of a massive washout, taking out both lanes of the highway between Watson Lake and Fort Nelson. During the year, so people were having to route way around. This information flow was really great for those of us that were up there, not really traveling in groups. That worked fine. And what, what was really cool, I don't think we've got it on video, but uh, in Valdez, when we were leaving, we ran into one of our... Route Down fam, if you're on Instagram, cool full-time travel family, yeah. super nice people. Um, Darrell's Downsize, that's another family out there with younger kids that are getting it done. And both of them, um, now I got a shoot out to RV Happy yet. Excellent channel, excellent source of information. Fleetwood Max, they're about to do something really different and exciting in their life. These are all uh, Instagram groups that we were connected with on the way and really valued that source. Absolutely. Okay, we wanna clear this up for you all because a lot of people have asked us in comments or sent us um, DMs. And if you ever wanna email us, you can do that. We'll put it in the comments. Hello at lifebetweenthedigits.com. We do respond. A lot of people have asked us about our tires. What kind did you have? What kind of rig were you in? None of that was what was wrong with our tires. Yeah. It was a fluke. Yeah, it was. It was our um, tire pressure monitoring system. Um, we kind of suspected that even in Bayef. And mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, even once we took them off, it, it did something with the stem. I don't know what, it, it was a fluke. It was a fluky thing because we had taken those very tires on a couple of trips prior to Alaska and not had a single yeah. problem. Once it started, it just <laughs> wouldn't stop. It, it wouldn't stop. And then we, we legitimately had two flat tires. Yes, with screws in them. And two unexplained tires. <laughs> so that's how many flat you tires. You do have right? a high odd of having a flat tire on this trip, travel with spares. Please don't worry, this is going to happen to you. It had nothing to do with the road conditions. The problem, we really started to get suspicious, actually in Montana, that something's up with these tires. So nothing to do with the Alcan, nothing to do with this trip. Just know that it was a fluke. They were Cooper H rated tires. Those are excellent tires. Um, had nothing to do with that. It's just one of those things. And I think more people maybe were intimidated by the breaking of the leaf spring and worried that it had something to do with our suspension, our RV. Sometimes things just happen because of human error. That's true. Things just do happen. Sometimes people screw up and things just break. Yeah. Right, Jeff? So, yeah. So, we... We? I was in the passenger seat. Continue. I... Thank you. I am the reason for the broken leaf spring. It's I know it. Um, if you go back and listen... Um, Getting out of Valdez, we were very late, um, <laughs> in, entirely too late. Um, we had a bad attitude that day. Yeah, we, kind of we like, didn't really want to go. We weren't, and a, then, we weren't in a road trippy mood. No, we were, were not. We had a 19-day drive in front yep, of us. Yep, and we got out way too late, yeah. and we were we we were over ambitious, even leaving that late. And then once we once we took off, um, I got impatient. And there, it was on the stretch of road between Toke and, and Beaver Creek, um, which is a strange stretch of road because it's so bad. And then you get, it opens up and you think, oh, you're great. And then you're not great. It's not great. Yeah. And um, we both have said, we know the exact pothole that that, um, I was probably going 40 when I should have been going five or six. Hit it square on. I, I, because it, I, I didn't see it. It it yeah. just came out of nowhere. Harsh words were spoken. Yes. Um, loudly when yeah. it happened. 
And, and I said, something broke. I don't know what. I mean, I had no idea the leaf spring had broken, but there was no way we hit that hard. Honestly, at the time, I was thinking inside the RV probably right. something broke. And we did the next uh, pull-off. Um, we pulled off and we and we looked because it was that um, we just never caught the leaf spring. Gatsby, of all people. Of, <laughs> <laughs> of all dogs. Of all dogs. Um he just started freaking out in the rig. Yeah, night. he got really, we pulled over. We were going to stay in that spot for the night. We were making dinner and he just would not stop whining. And then I said, what is that noise? And it was it swinging is ultimately what it was. But we didn't know what it was. We went outside and it was just hanging and swinging. Yeah. So. so, look, I know RV leaf springs, sure. It's an issue. It is an issue. On um, This one's on me. It is. And listen, also so important for us to tell you. There are a lot of people we know that went and they made it all the way there and all the way home without anything really happening. Right. So it can be done. We were just on a weird jag. Like we we, yes. we took a weird ride this summer. It happens. Well, and, you know, I've, I've said before that we went five years RVing and except for one water leak. Yeah, the flood in Yosemite. Yep. Except for that, we, we have had such a great run. Yeah. And our run ended in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> and we paid the piper. We That's paid the piper. That's what it was. We'd been dancing the tune, and it was time to pay the piper. That's right. None of this should intimidate you. Not we at all. We're going to be fine. I say it again. Just plan ahead. And who knows if the roads are that bad from year to year. I don't think they are. We heard a lot of talk. And part of the all-can collapsed, if that gives right. you an idea. So I think it was just a really bad year. It was a really bad year. The other thing that you don't know are, is, are they bad from year to year, is the mosquitoes. In 2022, they were awful. Epic. They were epic. And a lot of locals said um, that they had not seen them this bad in six years. Uh, we heard reasons for glacier melt-offs and all kinds of different things. It's just reasons. a perfect storm, I'm wondering. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's, it's strange. The, the um, salmon run and mosquitoes, the salmon weren't running and the mosquitoes were flying. So. It's like end of times at times. So we were in several towns you did not see because we didn't film it because I tried not to go outside. It was so bad chasing the salmon runs. And they were interior towns, Glen Allen, Willow, um, Salt Dotna. We were in all these places trying to chase the fish count. It was so indescribable. Much like in the video you saw of us chasing, uh, changing the leaf spring. They were just swarming us. They were swarming the dogs. They would heap up on the dog's nose. But when we got to the coastline, it was fine. So that's also very something important for you to know. Right. Once you get down to the coastal towns on the Kenai Peninsula, that's Whittier, Seward, Homer, um, Valdez, all these areas along the coast, we had no mosquitoes. We were fine. We also did not have mosquitoes in Anchorage. No, we didn't. So it wasn't all bad. It's no. just those last few videos, we had no idea all that was going to go wrong. And then, then we'd be filming all that. We just thought it'd be us driving in beautiful scenery. So um, that was very far inland, and there were a lot of lakes in that area, so the ripe mosquito conditions. We actually had someone email us this question, and I've heard other YouTubers gently address it. And I'm not sure, you know, we're we're not in this to be YouTubers. We are not looking for sponsors, things like that. So we're just sharing with you our trip. We were documenting it for our children and non-existent grandchildren that we hope to have someday. Um, so we're just always going to tell you our experience. That's all we know. Does Alaska tear your rig up? RVing tears your rig up. Yeah, it's a complicated question. It is, and I'm not trying to be deceitful about it. Um, we had no permanent damage from this trip. As things broke, we fixed it. We got it addressed. When we came back to the lower 48, our hometown, we went back to the dealership. We had it once over. I think they found another broken spring somewhere. I don't even remember what kind it was, honestly. It wasn't a big deal. No, it wasn't a big deal. And so everything's great again. So having said that, Jim and I did a lot of, especially by us, I mean, Jim, a lot of preparation before we went. Yes, we did. And... And strangely enough, I, I tried to reinforce the leaf springs yeah. before we went. And that that was a complete disaster trying to get out of here. I forgot so, about that. Yeah, That's right. right. So, um, But what did we do? You did all the shelving? Yes, I reinforced the shelving because in a lot right. of RVs that you see that all the time. We've had it happen. Yep, the, the upper shelving. Um, all the drawers were reinforced. I, 
Oh, and we had a technician come out. That's right. And I, I think I will do this going forward on a lot of our um, RVs. We had a technician come out and reinforce all of our plumbing. So a lot of the plumbing coming off the line right now because they had that heavy demand, you know, everything was being built a little more quickly, was just hand tightened in places. And as soon as we got our solitude, immediately there was a leak under the sink. And I said, oh gosh, here we go again. So we had a technician come out and just take it all apart, reseal it, attach it tightly. Never had another leak. Yeah. No problems. And and the rig was sufficiently jiggled. Yes. No, it was. Yeah. And so I think that's that's the thing is if, if you maintain your RV, sure, you could have something like a leaf spring or tire or, or any fluke thing happen. Anywhere in the country. Ha that's right. Yeah. How, having said that, going to... Going to Alaska, so you're not going to tear your rig up that much more. Unless you're just drunk while you're right. driving and being crazy. I will say, I'm trying to think long-term damage, not permanent damage. One of the biggest challenges we faced when we got home from Alaska was getting it clean. No, yeah, that's true. We had to keep getting it clean. We went to the Blue Beacon. We washed it. And then one day we opened up um, one of the propane tank doors, and the entire tank was covered in dust. And There's it was the like, alkaline dust. Yep. Months later. So it happens. But yeah, I think that was our, honestly, the biggest challenge is you're going to get so dirty. Yes, you're going to get very dirty. Either so, really muddy or really dusty. Yeah. Did both. Um, but to answer the question, no more than putting ever how many miles that is. If you're someone that um, just goes over to the lake for the weekend, this is, this is going to feel like a lot to you probably. Right. But if you are someone that travels, it's just... It's a math game. You're putting a lot of, of territory on it at once. You're covering a lot of real estate. So, yeah, but if you covered that much real estate in the lower 48, you'd probably have the same amount of problems, so. Another big question that we're getting is, what do we take? Well, um, a good set of tools. <laughs> uh, that's, that's my main thing. It's just your basic tools, um, sockets, Make sure you have a socket for every size that you might need, whether it's lug or larger. Um, a jack that works well for your rig. Yeah. And a lot of this is going to be different based on what you're traveling in. So, so. Yeah, and that's a big takeaway for me. And I carried that that jack for five years. You didn't and, need and, it. And it was a heavy-duty jack, and we never needed it. And when we did need it, um, <laughs> it was awful. It it took me more time to jack the rig up than it did to actually take the tire off. Sure. So what I would recommend everyone do is whatever jack you're traveling with, try it, uh, out. Try it out before you actually need it because it it might not work for you. And, and sometimes you can play with the landing gear in your leveling jacks a little to assist you. Do not count on that to change your tire right. because the chances of you being on that road and on the side of the road somewhere level enough for anything to reach the way that you need it to do it is highly unlikely. Yep. Um, what else do we need, Aim? Um, the the mom, number one thing I think you need to pack, and I'm with Jim, tools, and I don't like to overpack. Very much don't like to overpack, but if you're going to overpack anything, have the tools you might need, because that's going to give you a sense of comfort when something, you know, pops up. My number one thing to pack would be perspective. Keep in mind no matter how rough your journey gets or not, be it mosquitoes or flat tires or leaf springs, those things that go wrong, to me, it's still a heck of a lot better than the old 70 hour work week we used to spend our time doing. And I don't ever wanna lose sight of that. I'd rather be in Alaska, maybe minus the mosquitoes, but dealing with changing tires than to be doing a 70 hour work week. And so few people get the opportunity to do this that you, know, you gotta keep that perspective. We're not in the hospital. We have our health. We're made, taking the trip of a lifetime. We're spending our summer in Alaska. This is just all part of the cost of admission, as I like to call it. Someone reached out to us with a question that I thought was interesting that I had to give some thought to. I don't know how helpful my answer is going to be, but I'll be honest. But we'll start with you. What's your number one regret that if you could have a do-over from our trip to Alaska, what would that be? Um... Besides hitting the pothole at 40 Yeah, right? yeah. Well, okay. Well, that goes without saying, right? That is one. Yeah. All right. So that is my biggest regret. Um, I don't have any other one. Um, 
You know, I regret, because I know we're going to go back to Alaska one day. Yeah. I regret that we can't go back and it be like that first time because I agree. That is, that is something that I would like to recapture. And it feels like we're giving you cheesy, sunny yeah. answers now, but truthfully, I mean, that is from the bottom of my heart. Keep a good perspective. And it is a little. For those of you that are going, several of you have commented. Oh, we're, we're so, so excited for we're you. so stoked for you. We want to we go really too. Are. We want to go too. Yeah. But then we're like, well, but it wouldn't be our first time again. And nothing's going to be and like that. And please share on, on Instagram. We'd love to see your journey. Yes, if you're videoing it, um, reach out to us. Put in our comments where we can all watch. We want to go along with yeah. you. If you're on Instagram, we're at Life Between the Ditches. Make sure to let us know you're going. We're going to follow you. We can't wait to see your all's adventures this year. No, we cannot. My number one regret, <laughs> and maybe many of you can relate to this, maybe more girls than men, I don't know, but I had no idea that we were going to have all these very exciting things happen that day we left Valdez, or I swear to you, I would have brushed my hair and put on some clothes. So it's painful me <laughs> to go back and watch like, oh my gosh, but we were just so tired and, and frustrated and we're just going to file that under. It is what it is. Sorry about that. Sorry you had to watch. So, two videos back, Amy made the comment, I'm going to sell the RV and buy a beach house. So, Amy. A condo at the beach, please. Let's not exaggerate. <laughs> okay. Did you sell the RV and buy anything at, at, at the beach? It's really funny because, complete coincidence, I posted the picture on Instagram when that video came out. Fluke. I mean, I didn't put two and two together. I'm not that clever. A big picture of RV. Those of you on Instagram have seen it, it says, sold. We did sell our fifth wheel. We did. But it had nothing to do with anything you all saw. So when we came back, um, we actually said, uh, maybe our RV days are, are coming to an end and we're gonna sell the RV and maybe start traveling in different ways. Yeah, and then we took a nap. Right, <laughs> that's right, we took a nap. We took a nap. We're, we're RVing kind of people, so. Well, and one of the reasons we did RV travel, other than these amazing adventures, is our pets, like many of you, are part of our family. And two of our three dogs travel with us. Um, you've seen little White Gatsby and our very elderly Black Lab Silas. And Silas has been having to use ramps to get in and out of our vehicle since 2019. They told us in 2019 that he was passing away and it's 2023 and he's still kicking and we're thrilled about it. And we feel like maybe he's got uh, some good adventures left in him. So we needed something a little more accessible for him because even with the ramp, a full profile fifth wheel, the stairs we measured out. Gosh, we were even surprised. What was it? Uh, like four feet? 42 inches. 42 feet. inches off the ground, so pretty steep on the ramp. So we needed to try to come up with a better way to travel for our dogs. And Jim just got his new hip. I know y'all are going to miss that limp from last year. I know Jim is. Sorry about that. And he has a issue with the knee. So we love fifth wheels. That's what we've been doing for five years. As many of you know, it's like traveling in an apartment but it's time to change and we are making a really big change. We are making a big change. And we're gonna take you along for that. Yes, we will. So in the next couple of weeks, you'll see our search for- What all have what all have we considered? What haven't we considered? <laughs> so true, would be vans. We have not considered vans. We're not van Sort of. No, we're too old. I, well, yeah, we look at them and- We're just them. not that cool. I don't think it's our age yeah, come well, to think of it. That's true too. We're just not, and our dogs are big. Um, but we did look at B pluses. Well, yes, we looked at B pluses. And we really want to be B plus people. Yes, we looked at uh, class A's. We looked at class A's. Oh, that's, those are nice. Those are very nice. Um, we looked at travel trailers. Yes. We've looked at... Um, um, we looked at a really small fifth wheel. It just came out brand new. It was really cool. Who yeah. made that? Uh, Alliance. Alliance. Yes. Yes, like that a little 22 ml. That was, that is a really cool thing. Yeah, that. Uh, Maybe that's what we got. Anyway, we're going to take you along for that journey. And we weren't trying to be indecisive, but we've just always done fifth wheels. So it was a big yeah. decision. Yep. And who knows where we'll end up. So I know where we'll end up because we've actually completed the deal. We're waiting to go pick it up for Jim to be cleared for travel. So that's true. That we're going to take you along for all that. Um, we have a big trip planned again this summer. We'll be gone for several months. 
Summer 2023. Jen? BC. BC. Summer in BC. 2023 in, in BC. BC. <gasps> Look at that. That's so cool. That is so cool. Sticker made. So yes, we're going to British Columbia and we are so looking forward to... We have all of our reservations booked. We Yes, yes we do. We're going to take the ferry over to Vancouver Island, down to Washington and... We got it all planned out. It's going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. We're going to see some friends in British Columbia um, that we've been trying to get to for, for some time. So <laughs> we are looking forward to this trip. Uh, we hope you come along for that trip as well. And can we say thank you for all your kind comments? Um, you guys are so nice. You're so nice. And uh, you worry about us. And um, we really appreciate the comments. The, the, we're very, very grateful for that. We as empty nesters have found great community in the RV community. People look out for each other. That's something else you need to remember on your way to Alaska. People are going to stop and help you if you get in trouble and you're going to stop and help other people if they're in trouble because that's just what we do. So we are um, always overwhelmed that people are watching it all. We really did just make this for our close family and friends. We had some parents with dementia. And so we wanted to document us while we were still healthy enough and living our best life so that our future family generations would always have that to look back on as who we were. So the fact that you're with us at all is a little surprising to us, but your graciousness and your kindness, we really appreciate that support. We do. So onward uh, to 2023 and let's start looking. New hip, <laughs> new RV. Oh, so many things to be excited. 2023. Excited.